Welcome everyone to our 2024 annual meeting, business meeting, um, as a, an offering of prayer um, to open our time together. I offer you these words that I shared with the board the other day. Um, they are from Kiowa writer N. Scott Mamaday. The earth is a house of stories. When we dance, the earth trembles. When our steps fall on the earth, we feel the shudder of life beneath us and the earth feels the beating of our hearts and we become one with the earth. We shall not sever ourselves from the earth. We must chant our being and we must dance in time with the, rhythm, with the rhythms of the earth. We must keep the earth. Okay, so let's get down to business. First thing on um, the agenda is approval of the agenda itself. So uh, once you've had a moment to review the agenda, I will entertain a motion to approve the a motion in a second to approve the agenda. If this is like the time that you've just been waiting for to participate in the governance of the REA by making a motion, <laughs> now is your time to shine. I move that we approve the agenda. Thank you, Annie. I need to second. I second that motion. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, any discussion regarding approval of the agenda? <clears throat> Denise? It appears to be the 2023 agenda. Is that just error in the, I mean, the link I clicked and the one in the um, conference materials, it appears to be the 2023. Am I yeah. just- Denise, look at the very top where it says draft meeting agenda. You're right. The link you clicked on is wrong, but the one atop it is okay. Okay, thank you. Additional points of discussion. Okay, hearing none, I uh, invite you to indicate um, your favor for approving the agenda by raising your hand, either physically or by emoji. Great. Anyone opposed? Okay, we'll wait for your hands to go down. Okay, I think we're good. Motion passed, approval of the agenda. Okay, approval of 2023 minutes. The same process will follow. Um, I would uh, just give you a moment to review the minutes. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve in a second and we'll move forward from there. I move that we approve the minutes from the 2023 business meeting. Thanks, Mary. And I second. Thanks, Patricia. Any discussion of the 2023 minutes? Okay, all in favor of approval of the minutes, please indicate so by raising your hand. Fantastic, anyone opposed? Okay, I think we're good. Thanks so much for that. I do want to call your attention to the slate of nominees uh, put forth by the nomination committee, nominations committee and uh, approved by the REA board. Um, part of what we will do now, what I will do now is go through, um, just walk you through each um, office and those nominated. Um, and if um, you would like to self-nominate from the floor for any position or nominate a colleague who you have their permission to nominate um, from the floor, you are welcome to do, to do so. And we'll ask you just to say a word or two um, biographically about your experience and expertise. By a word or two, I mean like three sentences tops. So I will move now through the slate. Um, Lakeisha, I'm not gonna be watching for hands or people who wanna speak real easily as I move through this. So if you could watch for that, that'd be really helpful. Okay, so um, 
I'll begin walking through the slate uh, with REA board president. This is a two-year term starting September 1st, 2024, running through August 31st, 2026. Um, Reverend Dr. Karen Marie Eust is uh, running for this position. Just want to pause here. Are there nominations from the floor? Okay. Um, REA board treasurer serves uh, the same two-year term. Um, the nominee is Reverend Dr. Denise Jansen. Are there any nominations from the floor? Fantastic, thank you. Um, chair of the Advancement Committee of the REA board. We currently have no volunteers for advancement committee, the board will essentially continue to work on fulfilling vacancies um, one way or another. But I will pause and check. Any nominations from the floor for advancement committee chair? Okay. Um, chair for proposal selection committee. Candidates include Dr. Heather Ingersoll, and Dr. Sasi Kumar Kumar. Any nominations from the floor for that position? Okay. Um, chair of uh, RE and Public Life and Global Community Committee. Um, well, we, have, we have one hand, uh, Greer. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Greer. And I believe we had one other nomination for, from the floor, Elizabeth Nolan, correct? And is that is, is this for chair for public life and global community? For RE and public life and global community. If you want to put your name in for that, can you please write your full name in the chat for our tech team so that they can make sure they put it on the um the ballot, please. So this is for chair for global life. Yeah, you saw the name. So put put your full name how you want it to appear in the chat, please. So Greer, please put your name. Elizabeth, please put your name in the chat so our tech team can write it down the way you would like to have it. Thank you. And once I have your names in the chat, Greer and Elizabeth, um, I will ask you uh, in succession, the succession at which your nominations came, just to tell us a little bit about who you are and um, just a brief bio, again, less than four sentences. So Greer will just invite you to share. I don't have that name in the chat yet. So oh, sorry. You're right. I, I need the name in the chat. This is Greer. I'm sorry. That was a mistake. I was trying to figure out what to do on this screen. So take my name off, please. Oh, you don't want to? Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. That was a, a technical mistake I was making. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, I'll go ahead and... Oh, uh, Elizabeth Nolan, I'm sorry, is Reverend Dr. Elizabeth Nolan. I've got that. Thank you. Also, Elizabeth no worries, Greer. It's okay. <laughs> um, uh, Elizabeth, would you just share a brief uh, biographical word with us? Sure. Um, hi, I'm, I'm coming to you from uh, Queensland, uh, Australia. Uh, I joined REA uh, and APRI back in 1983 when I started studying at Union Theological Seminary and Teachers College, College Columbia University for my uh, Doctor of Education in Religion and Education. Um, I've been working in the field of religious education, Christian education, uh, since the uh, early uh, 1970s. Um, I have um been involved in writing uh, curriculum uh, in, in training teachers uh, but then uh, when religious education um, kind of collapsed in Australia uh, in in schools I was in charge of Queensland uh, religious education in state schools um I I then went into a parish ministry um, I was ordained back in uh, 1994. So I've been in parish ministry uh, since the uh, mid-1990s uh, and now officially retired, uh, but still doing uh, a supply ministry until the end of this year, 
uh, at a place called Glasshouse Country, a uniting church just north of Brisbane in Australia. Um, but I love REA. Um, I would love to have some other people help me uh, on what I see as a, a kind of new committee um, trying to outreach uh, to uh, look at the ways in which we interface with our community at, at large, the global community. Thank you so much. Okay, Chair for Publications Committee has uh, three nominees. The first is Dr. Remigius Okonwo, oh, Okonkwo Mwabichi. The second is Hoffman Ospino, PhD. And the third is Dr. Hava Sinem Urgulu. Uh, we have no candidates for historian. Oh, let me back up. Sorry. Are there any nominees from the floor for publications committee chair? Okay. Um, thank you. So we'll move on to historian. Uh, we currently have a vacancy of nominees there. Uh, anybody interested in nominating from the floor for historian? Okay, thank you. Uh, member, uh, nominees for member for the RE and Faith Communities Committee include Ala Doten Akinubi, uh, Ahmed Deniz, uh, the Reverend Cheryl B. Minor, PhD, and the Reverend Trey Phillips. Any nominees from the floor for RE and Faith Communities Committee? Okay. Um, uh, nom nominees for member for the RE in Public Life and Global Community Committee include Monique Van Jeek Groenboer. Uh, oh, the second person, I can't see their name. Um, Ibrahim Kurt. Professor Maitumalang Nafantho. And Lauren Zinn. Any nominees from the floor for Aryan Public Life Community Committee members? This is so fun, isn't it? Okay, um, let's keep going. Uh, member uh, nominees for member Aryan Academic Disciplines and Institutions Committee include Dr. Yasmin Epek, Yakup Keskin, Dr. Israel Diaz. Freitas, Dr. Tom Legrand, and Dr. Remigius, who I introduced to you before, uh, and Hannah Sutton Adams. Any nominees from the floor for RE and Academic Disciplines and Institutions? Okay, thank you. And Uh, we have one nominee for a member for the Advancement Committee. Uh, that's Dr. Cynthia Cameron. Um, I had another nominee come through my email earlier uh, for Advancement Committee, and that is Dory Baker. Uh, Dory couldn't be here, but asked me to uh, nominate her from the floor. So members for Advancement Committee nominees include Cynthia Cameron and Dory Baker. So I should add Dory Baker to the ballot? Yes, sir. I'll put her name in the chat. Will do. Lakeisha just did. Okay, got her. Thanks. And then finally, um, nominate, nominee for member at large is the Reverend Dean G. Blevins, PhD. Phew. Okay, as soon as Eric tells us that it's time to do so, we will vote electronically. So you're going to receive the whole ballot at once with all choices, and you'll go ahead and make all your choices and then submit your ballot, and we'll have results at the end of our meeting. I will note that most of these you're selecting just one person, but there are a couple where you can select two people. So pay attention to where it says select one or select two um, on the ballot. Um, 
and let me put up that poll. Yep, this is correct. Okay, so I'm launching the poll now. That should put the ballot on your screen. And don't forget, um, once you reach the bottom of the ballot, to also submit your ballot. So one person has done that. Thank you. At least I know it's working. OK, great. Um, we are, um, I know some of you are still wait, making your way through the, um, through the ballot. Anne? Yes. The ballot says that the member for the advancement committee is a select one, but on the slate, it says two spots are open, which is correct. There are two spots available on that, on that committee. Okay, so even though the ballot says single choice, we can vote for two. No, you will not be able to vote for two because the it was nobody informed me of that, and so the ballot I could end the poll right now, and we could do this again, and I could fix that problem. But I was not aware of it. We needed to change that as well. We added a candidate, and then we, we did didn't... two spots. Yeah, no good catch, good call. Should I end the poll and restart it? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Wanda. One moment. Um, let me fix that problem. So advancement committee should be multiple choice. Yes, please. And select two. Mm -hmm. um, and then let me start the poll again. All right. I thank um, you. No, no, no. Don't 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 all write that. It didn't work. Hold on. Um we may not be able to fix that because we've already launched the poll once. Um and it may be that I can't make changes after the poll is launched. Let me just see. I did select two for one of the options. I'm pretty sure it was advancement. No yes. advancement. Yes, one of them. Yes, that's right. Right. Advancement now. Well, the member advancement committee says select two now. Save. Close this up. Let me just try this again. Which number is that on the ballot? I think it was number nine, I think, before the, I think it was like. Or was it the last one or before the last one? It's number nine, and it is still a select one. Um, so uh, I I think what we're seeing is that Zoom will not let me change. Okay, change it to the multiple because we've already launched it. Yeah, hold on. I've got a I've got a new idea. Okay. This will work. I'm going to duplicate this whole poll so that it's a new poll. Um <clears throat> Duplicate, and we're going to run the copy. And I will say, if that doesn't, uh, just as a, as a backup, if that doesn't work, I will say, since there are two spots available and we have two names, I think that might also make sense um, if we kind of maybe do a, an in-meeting vote that allow this both of This worked. Oh, it sure did. All right. Great. So okay. this is, you're now voting on the copy of the slate of nominees. This copy has the correct number. Sorry thank about you. the confusion. No, no. Thank you. Sorry, we didn't okay. say anything. 
and if you voted before, vote again, because this is brand new. We don't have the other results. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Okay, I'll give you another moment or two to finish your ballot. Mm -hmm. And Denise, if you're finished with your ballot, we'll go ahead and move into budget report. Um, excuse me, uh, this is Elizabeth Nolan. Um, I notice in, in seven, uh, the the members of the RE and Public Life and uh, Global Community Committee, it's still, the ballot still says one. Um, my my question is, um, um, a committee of three is very small. Um, so one of the possibilities would be uh, for um, all of those who, who are interested in serving on that committee, uh, <laughs> if I should be elected, I would really love to have. Uh, joining with me. Um, how might that be facilitated? Do we need to just have two extra people on the committee? At the moment, I, I can only have one. So generally just the voting, we um, well, some of the bylaws are changing, which we'll get to in a little bit, where it says a, a minimum of, just so that we have certain names, at least two to each committee. But again, it's a minimum of, so you can ask however many people you want to. It doesn't necessarily need to be voted on. So I'm happy to give you and forward you those names for, for those who maybe didn't officially get voted and you can invite them to the committee as you wish because you know they have a passion and excitement for it. So I'm happy to follow up if you know with you on that. And if you're moving on with the agenda, Anne, I really need to know when to call this done because we only have 22 of 28 people and I I have no idea if the other okay. six have any intention of voting or. Yes, I'm I'm almost finished. Okay. Sorry about that. I just need to know <clears throat> when you want me to call it. Um, if you're going to move. Okay. On. It's fine if we stay here, then we can. We're at 23 of 28. So five people have not voted. Four people we're waiting for. So if you are still voting and you need an extra minute, can you raise a raise a hand? Just so we know. Thanks. Thanks, Drew. You're welcome. I'm just checking. I'm sorry about the restart. Slow everything. And sometimes folks join meetings with their camera off and walk away to cook dinner or who knows. So right. Oh, okay. that could be what's happening here. So we'll give it. I am done. Thank you. So we are we are only missing one vote right now. Okay, so 27 okay. of 28 have voted. Hey, is there any one <clears throat> person who's still working on your ballot? Fine, if you are. We just want to know. Exactly. Okay, are we good? Then we will call it. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to end the poll now. And... Um, then I'm going to work on getting the results to Lakeisha so that later she and Anne can announce what the results were. Wonderful. So unfortunately, you. a little bit goofy in Zoom to get these out of here, but we'll get them over. <laughs> to yeah, yeah, thanks everyone for your patience. And thank you so much, Eric, for working with us. Okay. All right, Denise, budget report. Yes, ma'am. And Lakeisha is going to do me the favor and honor of sharing the screen for me. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> so what you see here is the profit and loss statement, and this is ultimately the best snapshot of how our organization is doing financially right now. Um, this shows you that um, we have, uh, you may be interested to know that we've received the journal stipend and journal royalties for the year already, and as well as some membership dues and some Horizons royalties. So Income presently is at 75,000 and change. You can see then next the expenses. 
And um, for the most part, these are expenses within the range we would expect. A little bit of an increase in web management support, um, just a, a small increase. Um, you can see the other expenses there, regular staff expenses. The audio visual that's listed there for the annual meeting is um, the, the translation that we're having at the annual meeting. So that's a, a commitment the board has to making the meeting accessible. So presently, the total expenses um, at this point in the year are 39,000, which looks like we have a huge overage, but we will in fact spend all of that and hopefully end with an almost balanced budget. That is always our goal. In past years, we've been able, since COVID, we, because we are not in person, we have not had to draw on the endowment. We've not had to draw down the amount that's in the budget on the from the endowment, which has allowed the endowment to grow a little bit. Uh, so it's possible, um, if we are close on that, that we will still need to draw down on the endowment, uh, which is perfectly within uh, what we would expect to do. So we've just been able to avoid that um, of late. All right, uh, balance sheet um, shows the overall financial health of the organization. You can see the um, the bottom line, uh, 400, uh, roughly 400,000 in net assets, uh, same on the liabilities side. The um, assets include endowment in a number of places and you can see the investments there. I will also show you the Fidelity Investment Report, which shows the net account value uh, presently. There's a slight glitch between this report and what you saw in the balance sheet. We're working on this with our accountant uh, to get the, the numbers to match, but no money is missing. It's just a glitch in how the numbers are being reported. So 345,000 in investments, the rest of that 400,000 is in uh, liquid assets in the checking account. All right, and then the proposed budget for 2025. Um, and it is, again, um, sort of what you would expect to the income side um, with all contributions. Uh, and those are, those are not membership, those are straight up contributions. People add to their uh, membership and other places. So $1,500 as we've budgeted in prior years. You can see this year we're on our way to that. Um, and this is as of uh, budget to actual as of the end of April. So usually if folks are going to add something to their, to a, contrib a contribution to something, they will add it to their annual membership, which many folks have renewing about the time of the annual meeting. Um, you can see the other numbers there, the journal income as we might expect. Uh, journal, that's the guarantee and the stipend, as well as the royalties. Um, and it's, we think that's within the range of what might be expected. Uh, membership dues, um, we have proposed um, for 2025 to um, increase slightly the membership dues. And that is a $10, $10 increase for the amounts that are not the lowest membership level. So we feel like the lowest membership level shouldn't change, $40. Um, but they, uh, each of the other levels, um, the $80 level, the 105 and the 125 should increase by $10. And you can see that top level, um, we actually proposed should increase by $15. What that will allow is uh, for us to cover the expense that's related to redesigning our website. Um, we have, uh, it will also mean that we'll have to draw down our endowment the next couple of years, but these, these membership increase numbers are proposed at this point. Um, we, will, we will make them real someday. The recommended draw in the endowment is 4% of a three-year rolling average which for us next year would be 14,344, at least as we've um, as we've seen the rolling average for this year. So, and that amount will be needed next year. The total income we propose is 116,790. And you can see that's um, not all that different from this year's proposed budget. Um, 
All right, um, down to expenses. Um, there's a slight increase in our insurance um, that we noted um, in 2023, but failed to budget for in 2024. Um, I, th I think it actually happened after we uh, after we made the budget, which happened six months earlier than the end of the year. So you can see the problem there. The um, increase we've proposed to have um, in the budget for next year, so that that'll be taken care of. Um, other expenses in that section, roughly what we would expect. Um, the uh, Warnham Grant, all of these uh, board section um, are similar to prior years. One thing we have done is instead of um, including a stipend for board members that covers a gift, uh, gift card essentially for meals during the annual meeting and during the other board meetings, um, we've just eliminated that for this year. It's a way that the board can also contribute to our mm -hmm. balancing the budget during these two years when we're paying off the new website. Um, we do hope to bring that amount back because we feel like it's important to thank board members for their uh, for their contribution of service. Uh, you can see the additional charge there for the new website, and that's web management support, which comes with a slight increase um, in the so the website um, is the top number, and then um, the web management. Uh, is a slight increase uh, to cover the costs of the um, of Tenseg and the the ways in which they now need to manage the website given its upgrade. Um, you can see also the um, amounts that are proposed there for program, regional gatherings, and a new position to support the executive secretary. And I can explain uh, the logic for that. So. The other two numbers are the same, uh, program and regional gatherings. The $3,000 to support the executive secretary is based on an assessment of that position and the work that's being expected for the amount that's being paid. Um, one, of the, one of the ways we looked at reconfiguring that position was to put into the executive secretary's position all of the things that sustain the organization that uh, relate to continuity. So everything financial, things related to designing program, to managing the committee work and the meetings. Um, we felt like the executive secretary might need support or might choose to do that work uh, her or himself. Um, if we if we asked uh, for event coordination and that initially would be the fall gathering and the annual meeting, but could include other um, gatherings if we were in person. Uh, certainly the amount for um, the event coordinator would be increased. This would be um, a straight up contract position for a particular period of time, not an ongoing position. And you can see the other number there for humanly, which is the live translation. So the section here on um, annual meeting does increase a little bit. Um, and that's about $7,500, $7,800. All right, in this bottom section, um, we do propose an increase um, to the amount we compensate our executive secretary. The other positions will stay roughly the same. Um, so the, um, the bottom line here for Personnel, 61,500. You can see that's up a little bit over the prior year's budget. And that brings our total expense to 115,865, which means essentially we have a balanced budget proposed. I am happy to entertain any questions you might have. I see a question from Mary, and then we'll move to Noel. Um, one of the things that we did when we had the transition from Lucinda to Lakeisha was allow some overlap so that we could pay some overlap. And I'm wondering if the board has given any thought to making it possible to um, compensate Lakeisha, for instance, as she tries to turn stuff over to whoever the next person is. 
We have considered that. That would be, of course, in the 2024 budget, um, not in 2025. But um, so it's in the budget that's already been passed last year. So it would mean moving some money around. But yeah, we have considered that. And we've also considered the possibility that we may need to do something in an interim way. Or I mean, there's a variety of ways we may need to work um, in order to ensure the, the continuity of that position. Good question, Mary, thank you. No. Well, I think you were next. You might want to unmute, sir. Sorry about that, but I was. <laughs> No worries. Thank uh, you. I have just, I have just one financial question. I did have mem questions about membership, but is that coming later, or can, should I include that now? How many members are paid mm -hmm. members of the association? Sure. I'm going to ask Lakeisha if she can find that number for us. And while while she's doing that, would you want to go ahead with your other question? Yeah. The other one. I'm wondering. Uh, how does financial assistance for regional meetings, how, do, how does that work? Uh, um, it, there's there's an application process. Is. You can propose um, and put together a budget. So depending on how many regional gatherings are proposed, um, we spend that $7,500 the best way we can over however many are proposed. If that means we need to say no to someone and we haven't had to yet, uh, that may mean in the future if there's more gatherings than we can fund. But um, but that's essentially there's a there's an, an opportunity, sort of a call for call for proposals uh, is put out and regions are welcome to propose a gathering. So you do stick to the the uh, proposed budget for those, is that correct? We yes. I'm just thinking do. in it, yeah, where uh, <clears throat> instead of two or three gatherings, there are ten regions around the year, around Wouldn't the world. That'd be great. <laughs> I hope we have that problem, and I think I think the board is open if we do to find money in the budget that we might spend uh, reallocate to to regional gatherings. No, I think it's a good initiative and to be promoted, and not simply waiting for things to come in. So, absolutely, uh, that's one question. Yep. Lakeisha, do we have a number on members? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm looking right now, I can see the number of members we have. I'm trying to remember, if, and maybe Tensei can help me, um, finding where I find the only paid members, because I have everyone's membership plan. I can find all the number of, we have 92 with membership A plans. We have, so maybe let me add that up, 92, <laughs> I'm trying to like do the math. Lakeisha, La I, I think that Esther put it in her report. I think it's in her report. Oh, you're right. She did. Let me let me pull that up. We have um two hundred eighty four paid members currently. Thank you, Esther. Yeah, by 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 plan. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. See teamwork. What's what's the number? Two hundred eighty four. Three eighty four. No, two eighty four. Two eighty four. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Just and I had a question about uh, how many uh, actually are attending this meeting, this uh, 2024 meeting. What is the, the total actual membership of uh, people who are attend? Uh, unless you think you won't know until the end of the. I mean, it can change um, as of today. So when I did my report, I think it was like 123. As of today, it was 127. So kind of as the meeting goes on, it might shift and change. But that's the meeting. Um, we have, I mean, our actual membership, I think, is, you know, closer to like 316. I think I have that in mind um, mm -hmm. just in general. So, I mean, it's not quite the whole membership, but people are also coming in and coming out. And I know sometimes friends give friends email, you know, Zoom links. So, you know. <laughs> We're, we're tracking who we can, who's in the system. So. Okay, yeah, it looks like Cheryl has a question. I'm going to go ahead and 
keep us moving. Cheryl, do you have a question about sure. the budget? Thanks. Just, just quickly, thanks. Do you have any idea of what the lowest membership number has been and the highest membership number so far, just in, in comparison to what it is now? Um, I don't know that we can provide you that information just immediately, but we can certainly get it out to you unless I see a no. That would be fine. Yeah, that would be fine. I appreciate that. Great. Yeah, thank you. We'll move now to a vote on the proposed 2025 budget. Um, I'll entertain a motion and a second for approval. A motion to approve the 2025 budget. Thanks, Patricia. Second. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, and I'll pause here for any discussion about the motion. No discussion. Okay, so uh, please indicate your approval of the budget by raising your hand or a virtual hand. Okay, I wanna make sure Lakeisha can see all of those. Okay, and thank you. Uh, and if uh, you oppose the approval of the budget, please raise your hand. Okay, wonderful, thank you, motion passes. We have a 2025 budget. Look at that. Thank you so much um, to Denise for all your work on the budget. Uh, we'll move forward now to report on Warnham Grant awardees. Elizabeth Nolan. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a few things to say to you on behalf of our chairperson uh, coordinator, Joshua Lundawitia. So first of all, uh, just to remind you what the Warnham Grant Appeal or Warnham Grants are. Um, Warnham Grants are to do with seeking to reward emergent scholars, people doing innovative uh, work, um, especially those who have some practical aims or implications. Uh, and the grants this year were in relation to the conference theme of climate change. The people on the committee are uh, Joshua Lundwintia, who is our coordinator, uh, plus Dr. Tom Legrand uh, from uh, University Chaplain from Limestone Uni, who is uh, now needing to move on from there. So if anyone has an emergent uh, opening, uh, please talk to Tom. Uh, Dr. Monte Williams uh, from uh, San Diego uh, at uh, Point Loma Lazarene University. Um, uh, Professor Asaf uh, Jamil from Kuala Lumpur uh, and myself from Australia. Uh, we are wanting to uh, give appreciation uh, for this year's uh, opportunity to change the way in which the Warnham Grant uh, is being uh, offered. And so we've had a lot of discussions about it. We are particularly appreciative of the board's willingness to work with us and especially to uh, the program chairs, uh, Dory and Wanda, uh, for the way in which uh, this year it's an innovative approach to uh, providing a Warnham Grant. And so this year we had 17 applicants. Uh, that was uh, whittled down to uh, seven finalists. And then uh, finally, uh, after great difficulty, we chose three people. Um, I'd like to announce those names uh, right now. First of all, uh, Dr. Beth Nolan, not myself. <laughs> the other Beth Nolan, who is a new member, uh, but she comes from very close to me, uh, down the road uh, closer to Brisbane, and we're not related. Uh, the second person is uh, Shannon Hopkins, who comes to us from the UK, 
Uh, and uh, the third one is Paul Van Stratton, who comes to us from Canada. Uh, and uh, these are, uh, I believe, uh, all new members of REA. And so we're really excited, I think, they can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, excited by the potential of uh, what the, the projects and papers that they have written, and we're wanting to work with them further. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to hear about their work uh, by attending the sessions uh, where they're presenting, and a couple of those are still to come up. Uh, and we en encourage you to look at the uh, the program and, and choose again uh, some sessions to go to. Uh, but more than that, uh, we hope at the fall gathering in November, we'll have an opportunity for them to uh, speak to you all as a panel. So uh, watch for the fall gathering. I think that's all I need to say. Congratulations to all people who've been uh, who submitted wonderful papers to us to look at. Um, uh, it's been a lot of extra work, but we've enjoyed it. So thank you very much, uh, Anne, as president. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you um, to Elizabeth and Joshua and the rest of the Warner Committee, and congratulations to the awardees. That's wonderful. Um, we'll move on to publications report from Hoffman. Here I am, and uh, well, the, uh, as you can see in the public uh, publications report, uh, this year uh, we we had a transition in terms of the leadership of the co-editorial team at Horizons, and the new uh, chair of the co-editorial team is Dr. Mayan Letran. So thank you, Mayan, for assuming this uh, responsibility, and. Uh, Besides uh, that particular uh, uh, that particular uh, change that has taken place, uh, uh, you can see in the report, you know, uh, the work continues in terms of uh, um, promoting or moving forward the uh, the journal issue that comes out uh, out of the conference. And perhaps the last thing that is worth relevant, you know, uh, at this uh, at this very moment is that the change that we are introducing in terms of the the term of the uh, um uh, uh of the service of the chair of the publications committee and uh, and uh, remind me if we are voting on this uh, uh, at this meeting yeah yeah it'll be up in the bylaws vote we are or in the bylaws okay so just to simply explain that uh, briefly so uh, there's a proposal to extend uh, the the term of this of service of the chair of the publications committee to 3 years and uh, so uh, with a year of overlap, so whoever is uh, elected next, you know, will work together because there's a lot of work that requires uh, transition. So I think that ingrained, having a, uh, an overlapping grain in, the, in that service will be, be good for the board and for everybody else, and, and, and for, uh, particularly the members of that committee. That summarizes my, my report, uh, Anne. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Um, oh, we'll move on then to a report from uh, our networking coordinator, Esther. Um, hi. So it's this past year was my time to adjust to the job and uh, familiarize myself with the work that my predecessor, the great Mary Hess, did to keep RA. Um, as connected as possible. So I had a big shoe to fill and still trying. Um, uh, we talked about members a little bit. Like I said, we have about 284 paid members. Um, Mary put in her report that in 2019, before COVID, we had 344 paid members. So we're slightly below the um, number before pandemic. Um, but with this trial membership, uh, we are getting more and more members and I hope we can keep them um, connected. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I send out e-reaches. I'm always looking for more contents for e-reach. And then if you have any like membership, um, like anything you have that you want to share on e-reach, please let me know. Um, I'm also revisiting what I can put on e-reach and stuff. Um, 
one of the biggest thing was thanks to Tensei, we have our new website that was launched around March. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. I am also thinking of um, revisiting YouTube and because like shorts are really a thing these days. So I'm wondering if how I can use that and reach members beyond who are in this REA group so we can um, contribute to the academia and also get more members. Thank you. Wonderful, thanks so much, Esser. Jedi Officer Report, Christine. Um, thank you for the time. Uh, I just wanted to just say a quick word of appreciation for all of the colleagues that I've gotten to work with during my time, both on the board and also as a Jedi officer. Um, so deep thanks to all the doctors, Wakisha Lockhart, Esther Kim, Dr. Mary Hess, Eric and Alex Celeste. Um, I just wanna say thank you for your collegiality and all of the wonderful ways in which we were able to pursue these commitments together. Sometimes it was difficult, but we got through some really good times as well. So this year, we focused on a governance approach to JEDI as part of our work. Last year, we had a 2023, the first code of conduct for the REA created, um, and it was the foundation for our work through clearly stated commitments and how we think about our work and our life together. And I think one of the goals of that was to strategically move through conflict and have a commitment towards that instead of circumventing it or to let it kind of lie stagnant. So by pursuing this, we put a few things in place around our governance work that impacted the daily life and the rhythm of how staff work together, but also how the board decided things together. So last year, if our guiding question was, how do we codify Jedi values into our functions? This year, it was about putting into practice those values and embedding them particularly the circle process as a dialogical model of listening and understanding across difference. Um, one of the ways that we establish, well, there are a couple of ways that we establish circle process as our primary mode of dialogue and communication across conflict. The first was at the fall gathering where we had members of the advisory council, advisory committee um, and board members and others that were members of the REA host and facilitate conversations in small groups with membership around a conversation that had kind of been percolating for a long time, which is why are we still online? This question of um, when are we gonna go back in person? And what are the things that we've lost around being online and never in person? And what are the things that we've gained? And we learned a lot from each other around those conversations and hearing about both the cost, but the productivity of making that switch. One way that the board has also committed to circle process, um, there were ongoing deliberations this year about the role of statement making as part of the REA's work. Um, there was a big question and a lingering question about whether the REA is a statement making organization and whether the board should make statements um, on behalf or to the membership. This came about through a potential statement on the ongoing violence in Israel and Palestine. Previously, the board had decided it would become a statement making board on behalf of the REA membership and it received and approved a protocol and policy coming out of the committee on RE in public life and global community. And in the past, the board has made statements on Black Lives Matter and Stop AAPI hate. This year, at the request of the steering committee and through many conversations and hours of circle process together, um, they decided to communicate to the membership it's planned to re-examine the nature and purpose of statement making on behalf of the REA through conversation with the advisory committee this year um, at the annual conference. The board committed also to hosting a circle process at the conference, which will happen tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time called Religious Education in Violent Time. So I really wanna invite you to come to that and share a story about how you are na navigating violent times and turbulent times in your own teaching and life. And this ongoing conversation with membership through circle process will assist the board in determining the role and processes or revision of existing policies of statement making and other forms of education through advocacy in the life of the REA. 
and also the role of the Committee on RE in public life and global community. We have an exciting sister document coming forth um, from, it will come forth through to the membership once it is finished, but there is a code of ethics being produced. The steering committee has received and worked through an initial draft of a code of ethics for submissions, presentations, and publications. This, uh, the membership will be updated and it continues to review this initial draft with key partners, including journal editors and publishing partners. And that once that comes through um, to the board, the membership will also see it and the advisory committee will also be um, integrated into reviewing that document. We've continued to meet our JEDI values through the ways in which we are holding our online meetings, thinking through perspective changes, shifting from a North American focused guild to a guild that is focused on a global membership. And I think you can see that even in the slate of nominees, how so many, so much of that perspective has changed both about us as a guild and um, as we think of ourselves. And I think that's very exciting. We're continuing to emphasize those global priorities and also accessibility through multilingual live translation. You'll notice that we added for the first time Indonesian to um, celebrate the growing engagement with members and guests from Indonesia and the Indonesian diaspora. We're also continuing to focus as we, as we talked about before, Denise mentioned the local gatherings for anyone who does want um, to meet in person around any of the topics that we are discussing here or any of the topics that they would like to discuss as part of their regional gathering. So thank you so much for this collaborative work this year. Um, it's, it is hard work, but it is really good work. Um, and I wish you the best. And I will join you on the membership side. Thanks so much, Chris. Again, as I said before, thank you so much for your um, really uh, trailblazing work here as Jedi officer for us. Thanks so much. Um, Executive Secretary report, Lakeisha. Hello, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'll save all the gratitude to the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so just jumping in, um, looking at annual meeting numbers, uh, even what I have here, I put it earlier this week and the numbers have already changed. So our attendance is now 120, as of today, 127 uh, with 22 trial memberships. Uh, but the session breakouts, all of that is still remaining the same. Um, as you can see, kind of our number of papers has gone down, which is kind of more of a submission. Um, sometimes it's around the time, but we even extended deadlines. And so it could just be the year. It could be a variety of things. So a lot of times I don't think it's just the, um, the annual meeting. I think it's where people are and if they're able to get those papers in for proposals a lot of times. Um, so we're working on, I think, timeline and timing um, and extension process. Uh, but you can see the papers that we have had have been fabulous and wonderful. We still have a good, uh, healthy number of presenters, an international contingency and students, uh, as well as collaborations and posters. Um, uh, again, we continue to remain on online for, for right now. Again, that's up at the discretion of the board makes these um, decisions. So uh, there, again, we, as you've heard Chris mentioned, there's been talk about uh, going in person, hybrid. Uh, there's just lots of things to consider when they're making those decisions, um, not just our Jedi commitments, but finances and, and all of the different pieces. So I know that they will continue to make the best decisions uh, for the organization. Uh, you'll see information about the upcoming 2025 meeting, but I will leave it to uh, the folks coming up to talk about that, but you'll see it in my meeting. I'm very excited about that one. Um, and of course, more to come for 2026. Nothing has been decided uh, as of yet, uh, whether it's online or in person. So I'm sure that decision will happen uh, around fall uh, because they have to make it early enough so that uh, the new executive secretary will be able to make whatever arrangements need to get made. Because uh, usually if it is in person, it has to be booked like years, a couple of years in advance. So we have to get a, a start on that sooner rather than later. Uh, again, we didn't have any travel grants because we did not travel. <laughs> um, but uh, um, thankfully, uh, the Warnham Committee did an amazing job um, really uh, kind of revitalizing the Warnham grant this year and really um, trying to do something different and exciting. And, um, and congratulations to all three of the awardees. Um, just know that you, you got it because what you're doing is wonderful and innovative. So hopefully you can hang on and rub that in. And I look forward to hearing what you present at the fall gathering. Uh, and thank you to the committee for your amazing, wonderful and hard work. Um, I know all of you are across different time zones. And so it's, uh, it is hard work to get together, but I am grateful for the work that you all do um, and continue to do um, for, for the organization. 
Um, in terms of office administration communication, um, that's always happening. I mean, insurance, anything like that, that's always happening, but I'm going to spare you all of the, those little minute details. Uh, but in terms of membership, um, so our membership was about 325 in 2022. It dropped a little in 2023. And right now we're about, um, when I last checked, it was around 316, which is an increase. Um, and so I think we're just kind of in that fluctuation period, usually after trial memberships, um, sometimes they'll say, sometimes they'll go. So it's, it, it kind of fluctuates and depends, but I think we're holding, we're holding pretty solid, uh, especially for staying online, especially for, uh, for, you know, just, you know, being the organization we are and with theological education being where it is, I think we're, 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 we're hanging pretty solid. So I'm pretty excited to see that. Um, and the finances, as you know, our treasurer did an amazing job presenting, uh, presenting the budget. So I'm not going to repeat anything that she has said, because she's done a beautiful job. <laughs> Um, uh, for as far as board participation and support, uh, our board's been very active this year. Uh, Chris mentioned um, the piece around statement making. Again, please feel free to come to their conversation on religious education and violent times tomorrow um, from five to six p.m. Eastern time. If you're if if you're if you want to hear more about that and to share and to do that, um, they approved more languages. Again, thinking about our Jedi commitments. Um, they uh, hiring of our networking coordinator full time for the next three years. So Esther Kim, congratulations. Yeah, I know you'll be wonderful. Um, approving the um, 2025 annual meeting to be completely online. Again, some of that was because there'll be two changes in transition in leadership. And so they're like, that probably makes the most sense right now. <laughs> um, oversaw the website renewal with Tenseg, um, approved a 2025 budget to present to you all with the draw on endowment. Um, and created committees to start already. I mean, again, they've already had committees working on the positions for executive secretary and Jedi officer. If you are interested in either of these positions, it is not too late. Feel free to submit an application. I feel like I need to do a plug for that. Uh, I'm also happy to have any conversations uh, with anyone that you might want. It is a hard job, but it is also a filling job. So I'm happy to have any of those conversations. So please let me know um, if you want to be a part of RNA leadership. Um, also, um, the steering committee continues to meet monthly. The board of um, the board usually meets um, three times a year in the fall, in the spring, and then an annual meeting, usually twice. Uh, and then the steering committee meets every month. The plan annual meeting planning committee meets every month as well. And sometimes there are several of us that are on all these committees, so we're we like to see each other's faces. So that's why we've gotten to know each other very well. <laughs> um, hence all the love that you probably feel. Uh, but it's been wonderful. Um, I will add a, a caveat here. And just say, I didn't put it in here, but I will say um, that part of, I think, what we need moving forward is really um, more support with the actual committees that we have. Um, sometimes your people are kind of in and out or they don't always meet. And that makes it really hard on the chairs. That makes it really hard to get things done. And so if you're going to be on a committee, please be on the committee, show up, be, be, be present. We want you there. Um, that's kind of how our REA works on a lot of volunteer work, or like it works on a lot of people showing up and, and sharing their perspectives and their voices. That's how we get better. That's how we hold ourselves accountable. So please show up, please be a part of the committees um, and also hold your fellow committee members accountable. If you know your friend didn't show up on the committee, hey friend, come on. <laughs> so but please continue to do that good work because um, uh, it takes all of us to do this together because when it doesn't, it usually falls on certain folks. So <laughs> please just everyone does a little that way no one has to do everything. Um, REA, we still have a really good relationship, sorry, AAR, we still have a really great relationship with AAR. Uh, we're a related scholarly organization uh, with AAR um, and our, our um, RE in academic disciplines and institutions handles that beautifully and has been doing a wonderful job. Um, and although it's not in here, we are reworking some of our language around what our learning related organizations with Alum and others are looking like. So just know that that's in, in process, especially since we've been online, it's just looked very different. So we're in the process of, of revamping that to see what a renewed relationship looks like in, in this new kind of hybrid reality. Um, you'll see nominations committee, um, they curated the slate of nominees, uh, and you've already seen it. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't here on record, um, those that were nominated. Um, and then you'll see other, just kind of a note or two about um, the resignation. And I'll just read these um, these last little, little pieces. Um, uh, in my time in this position, I have done my best to represent REA. That has helped shape me into the scholar that I am, which I'm grateful for. Uh, I have not done well always, but I've attempted to move with joy clear communication, efficiency, transparency, honesty, timeliness, often engaging in tasks um, to try to make others and the work of others lighter. Uh, I was glad and honored to give back in this way to an organization that has given me so much over the years. Uh, an organization that welcomed me when my work on play with open arms when many other places would not. 
uh, an organization that has expanded globally by leaps and bounds, an organization that took seriously their work in diversity and inclusion enough to hire uh, me, <laughs> as well as a brilliant Jedi officer to really hold us accountable to not just talk about this, but to do the work of justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, and practice an organization that managed to continue to function and offer support during a pandemic, a whole pandemic. <laughs> Uh, an organization that takes climate crisis ancestors and the future of children and youth seriously. While I no longer uh, feel like I have the capacity to stay in the position, I have discussed strategies and recommendations to the board and the steering committee for moving forward. Um, I truly believe in REA and the work that we're doing in the world. Um, thank you all for the gift and honor of being your executive secretary these past few years. Um, I have cherished it and I honor it. Um, and I look forward to continuing to support and be a part of REA as a member. Um, so you will not be rid of me. I will still be around. Um, and I'm just grateful for all the great colleagues I've had to work with. All the, all the doctors, as Chris said, um, our 10 seg team, all the good folks um, that just, it felt like a team in moments where I felt like I was deficient and I'm always grateful. Um, so yeah, so it's been an honor. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still around just in a different way. So thank you all. Take care. Thanks. Thank you so much. I hope you see the round of applause for your incredible work and uh, all the comments to each of you, uh, both of you, each of you, everybody in the chat. Thanks again. We love you. We love you. Yep. That's all I'm going to say. No crying this time. All right. So let's move on. Um, Lakeisha, can you tell us about the 2025 annual meeting? You know, I can. Uh, but I mean, we have a group of folks that will tell it better, but I'll start just by saying, um, if you are interested, the process for proposing a theme is on the website. It, it is some, we will work with you if you want some help. It's a kind of, we have a process where you can write a proposal to design a theme. If you have any questions or concerns, send me an email, send the net, well, you know, send the networking coordinator email, <laughs> send the executive secretary email, um, and we can follow up and have those conversations. Um, remember, this was part of what we voted on when we did the big vote before the pandemic in 2019, that we want the themes to come from the, come from the organization. So this is part of living into it. So please put those proposals in. If you have a theme, you get with, a, again, collaboration. Maybe you don't want to do it by yourself. Get with someone else, collaborate, um, put a proposal forward so that we can take it to the board and we can have things to vote on, okay? So please know this comes from you. Please go on there. We have all the guidelines on there. We would be happy to accept your proposals and your themes. Uh, but we have a really great proposal for 2025 um, by none other than the brilliant, my play cousin, but seriously love <laughs> Annie Lockhart Gilroy as we, as well as Eileen Daly. And so I will turn it over to them and let them talk about their proposal for the 2025 gathering, which is pretty great. So I will turn it over to you ladies. Thank you very much. Um, I am going to uh, launch us with a, um, a brief video that yeah, lighten things up and yeah, hold on. Oops. Hang on, hang on. Oh, seriously? <sighs> <laughs> It's not, um, yeah, 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 it's a problem. It's a problem. Um, so because there's a problem, Annie, while I fix the problem, why don't you say a word about why you think that we should launch into this topic next year? Okay. So the topic, um, the title that we are proposing is Navigating Humanity, Technology, Ethics, and the Future of Religious Education. Um, I will say this is our updated title. Um, the first title we proposed was a bit long, in order to shorten it, I used the help of ChatGPT. Um, we thought if we were gonna talk about AI, we might as well use AI. Um, 
And it not only shortened it, but rewrote our whole proposal. And I will admit that my feelings were a little hurt because it was better. Um, but um, so what you see, what you will see on the website is produced with the help of chat GPT um, and this video, um, hopefully that I will get fixed is also produced with the help of AI. So this, this came about as a conversation we had at the fall gathering um, when we were asked to talk about um, what we gain and what we lost by moving online and talking about virtual communities. So Eileen and I happened to be placed in the same small group. <laughs> um, and as we started talking, we realized how this was important and a passion for us for different reasons. I come at this from the perspective of virtual community and disability justice. For many people for whom it is difficult to move, those with physical disabilities and mobility issues, being able to be in community like this um, while not dealing with the pain, the, the literal pain of, of travel means the world um, to us because I am in that group. Um, which then leads to other questions like, well, what is community and how are you in community um, with people that you have not met in person and only know them from here up. Um, or even broader, how are you in community, in virtual communities with people who you may have never seen their face, but you've seen them through text. There is now chat bots that will text back and forth with you called relationship chat bots, right? Um, are you in a relationship? And as we talked, we discovered that it's just not that easy to say no. Like, no, it's not community. No, you're not, you know, having conversations. No, you're not. So, so we are thinking about how it's how technology is now changing community, which it all which it always does. Um, and how it's changing what we think about when we think about humanity, right? What is the difference between artificial intelligence and human intelligence? What is intelligence? So as we continue to speak, we realize we had more questions than we had answers. And we present all of those questions in our call for proposals. <laughs> um, and we invite you to interrogate this topic with us. You got the video, Eileen. As we talk about technology. Yeah, no, the technology reality technology. check is uh, uh, I didn't think to actually be logged in as my identity to Zoom. I'm just clicking on the links. And so I can't share a video without doing that. And it didn't work just now. Okay, great. I mean, uh, important illustration of the challenges that the conversation at the annual meeting just might prompt. I got involved in all of this because last year at this time and then well into the fall, I was preparing for and then teaching a course called Transformative Faith Formation and Digital Media. And one of the things I found was that um, there's not a ton written in religious education at the intersection of religious education and tech. So it's time we wrote it. There's the invitation, basically. Okay, wonderful. So Annie and Eileen, thank you so much for um, working together, collaborating, and generating this uh, wonderful conference theme. Um, I will note for uh, the membership that um, Annie and Eileen's proposal is our only proposal for 2025. Um, and so what we will ask you to vote on in just a moment is the approval of uh, this singular theme. And I echo Lakeisha's invitation to you and encouragement to begin thinking about proposing 2026 annual meeting themes. Um, so just for the sake of clarity, um, the 2025 annual meeting will take place July 7th through 11th, 2025. The location uh, is online. The board is in, currently in discussions about um, uh, how the 2026 meeting will be offered online or in person or in a hybrid format um, that has yet to be decided. And the proposal deadline for 
the uh, 2025 annual meeting is January 1st, 2025. And I'm just going to keep us moving here real quickly because we are running out of time. So I will invite a motion to approve the uh, 2025 annual theme proposal that we have before us. And a second. I move. So moved. I move to okay. accept it. All right. We've got lots of, <laughs> lots of seconds. Fantastic. Uh, please raise your please indicate your approval by raising your hand. Gorgeous. Um, if you do not appro approve, please raise your hand now. Okay, wonderful. Um, Annie and Eileen, congratulations. You will be our program chairs for um, 2024-25, and we look forward to a generative conversation this time next year. Um, I'm going to hand it back to Lakeisha for some bylaws updates. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to share them really quickly, just in the interest of time. So there are two, uh, and then I'm going to invite Hoffman to talk a little bit about the second one. Uh, but essentially, the first one is just a clarification to add a minimum of again, so that the so that the committees can have as many members as they need to function. Because sometimes, as uh, Elizabeth mentioned earlier, two is not quite enough sometimes for the committees. Uh, so we're adding that language, but then also we're refining language around the publications chair uh, and committee, just because the transition, especially with the journal and doing that work, um, needs to be a little more. Um, uh, clear as well as helpful in transition and not as, uh, as as rough. So we're trying to put in some language to help the incoming person and the outgoing person as well as journal and all of the things that it encompasses. So I'm going to just do a quick screen share so you can see these bylaws just in case because I want you to know what we are voting to change. Uh, excuse everything else on my desktop right now. Uh, you know, pretty, you know. Um, so the, here Here's the language, it's an orange, a minimum of two additional members on each committee. So just, again, a minimum. And then if you go down, here's some of the language with the publications. And again, I asked the publications uh, committee to help with this language and they made sure it felt good for what it is and what the transition is. So I'll invite Hoffman, if you wanna say just a word or two about this shift, um, I know we're on time, so, but I wanna invite you so folks understand what this shift is. Uh, I, I, I pretty much you know explained uh, earlier when I was reporting, uh, so basically, you know, currently the chair of the publications committee serves uh, for two years. However, because there is a learning curve in terms of editing this uh, journal that emerges from uh, from the conference, and there's a lot of work in getting the reviewers and learning from Joyce and with Joyce about uh, about the process. So what we're recommending is that the person who is selected in this position would serve for three years. And then uh, when the term is expiring and you know, the person who will follow will, will be elected and then the previous one will stay for, a, for, for an extra year. So the two will work together and uh, there will be an overlap, which will help uh, everyone. So. Wonderful. Thank you. So I, I will turn it back over to Anne. Those are the two uh, bylaw changes. Yes. So honestly, I'm just going to move us right through motions and seconds and then take any questions during the discussion on the motion. So I'll entertain a motion to approve these two bylaw changes. I saw Elizabeth had a hand. I think that's a motion. Fantastic. A second. Thanks, Annie. All right. Um, just want to open uh, a moment for discussion on either bylaw change. No. I think you're muted, no. No, thank you. Um, all the organizations I belong to have a time frame for submitting changes in the bylaws to the membership. And I don't recall if the um, early 2000s uh, constitution for this REA, the present one, uh, has any reference to that. Typically it's 30 days prior to the meeting at which a bylaw change will be voted on uh, is notice of sent in writing to the membership. But if there's nothing in the present constitution about that, then 
this seems in order, but if there is a, an actual time frame for submitting bylaws changes, then I would say, uh, since at least I'm not aware that I ever received any advance notice of it. So in that article, it doesn't say anything about a time period. These bylaws may be modified, amended, or altered by two-thirds majority vote at any annual or special meeting of the association if legal notice of such meeting in advance contains a statement of the proposed alteration, amendment, or repeal. Um, so it doesn't say a timeline of notice. There was notice, and maybe that's something we need to make sure we note that we need to have more advanced notice. Um, but there is not a, it just says illegal notice of such meeting when there was notice, but there's no time frame of notice. So I'll leave at that. Okay, great, thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, so I'm gonna take vote the vote on these bylaw changes um, separately, first, um, to indicate your approval uh, for the change to Article 7, Standing Committee, Section 2G, please indicate your approval by raising your hand. Thank you. And um, if you uh, disapprove, please raise your hand. I'm not raising my hand. Showing it. Okay, wonderful. Motion passes. Uh, second, uh, mm, second um, issue is bylaw changes to section 1A of the REA bylaws. Um, if you approve, indicate by raising your hand. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, if you uh, do not approve, raise your hand now. Okay, wonderful. Motion passes. Thanks so much to our membership for um, helping us along. Uh, a quick, quick updates on staff changes, uh, and then we'll announce our elected um, chairs and uh, other leaders. So, um, first of all, I want to welcome Dr. Esser Kim to the permanent role of networking coordinator. Um, I am certain that Esser is experiencing um, baptism by a fire hose to the face this week during the REA annual meeting. So blessings to you um, for peace and good naps um, in between all of this busyness. Thanks so much for your work. We're excited about um, your work in the future. Um, I do want to let you know that um, uh, positions are, are are now open for executive secretary and Jedi officer. We will take applications until positions are filled. Um, the search committee for Jedi officer um, has two applications for that, that for that position and will begin their work um, immediately to select someone to fill that position. Uh, we currently have no applications for executive secretary. So please, just like we asked you to text your friends to come to this meeting, please also text your friends, talk to them, encourage them to think about serving as executive secretary. The board will consider um, stopgap measures while that position remains vacant. Um, and as soon as we have applications for that position, um, the search committee will get busy um, about the work of selecting um, an executive secretary. And now uh, we would like to announce our elected um, chairs and other leaders for 2025, which uh, I will not read, but you can see here in the chat. Um, congratulations to all of you who um, are here tonight and have been elected and are willing to serve. Just want to say um, a special gratitude for your willingness to step up and serve our guild. Uh, it's important work, it's volunteer work, and your time and passion and commitment um, are very, very much appreciated. So thank you all. 
Um, and we are four minutes past time. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Maybe, the, I don't know. I don't know who that was, but many people want to adjourn. A second? Mark? Second. Oh, Mark raised his hand on the first one. Okay. And a second somewhere on the second one. Fantastic. Um, all in favor, please raise your hands. Fantastic. Anybody who want to stay around, just go ahead and raise your hand. Okay. I think we're good. Wonderful. Thank you all for being present for this work uh, and for your commitment to the REA. Good night. <laughs>